Mastering CapCut has been an absolute priority of mine for the last couple of years. I've edited videos in CapCut that have reached hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this too. You see, if you can master each of the 15 effects that I'm about to show you, you too will be a CapCut master. And the best thing is you won't have to pay hundreds of dollars for other editing software because you can do all of it inside of CapCut. You may have seen this incredible trending effect from Jack Harlow, where he isolates just one singular color from his video. CapCut makes it easy to do. Using the adjustment and HSL tab, I can now isolate and desaturate all the colors that I don't want. I don't want any red, I don't want any green. By desaturating all the other colors besides yellow and orange, you can see that on our image now, it's taken away all those colors and just left the color that we want. I'm sure you've seen the text behind subject effect where you duplicate your video layer. On your top video layer, you go to video remove background and auto removal. Then by adding a text layer, you can drag that in between your two layers and our text is behind our subject. But you're not truly a CapCut master if you don't know how to animate this text so it looks like it's moving behind your subject. Let me show you how. On our text layer, go to basic, scroll down until you see scale. Add a keyframe at the beginning of your text layer. Move 15 frames ahead and add another keyframe and move 15 frames more and add another keyframe. On our middle keyframe, we're going to increase our scale to 110%. And then on our last keyframe, we're going to reduce this to 90%. Now you'll see what happens when we play that text. It increases and decreases in size. What I'm going to do from here is select on my text layer, right click and say create compound clip and drag this above our two layers. By using your mouse, you can scrub to where you find the text is reducing in size. Let's make a cut and drag the second clip back beneath the two clips. Now you can see we have our text in front of our subject and then behind our subject. Now to make this as smooth as butter and like After Effects, drag two extra frames on your top clip, go to Animation, go to Out and say Fade Out. Reduce this duration to 0.1 seconds and now if I use my arrow keys to show you how that looks, our text looks like it's animating behind our subject. Are you really a pro if you don't know how to do this next one? Let's go ahead and add a default text layer and let's add an effect. I'm gonna drag my text layer so it fits on the whole timeline and then selecting on my text layer, I'm gonna go to tracking, motion track and drag this box over our subject. Make sure that the box covers the subject. Now what we can do is click start. What I do to make this extra smooth is turn off scale and distance. Now when we click play, you'll see that our text follows the subject as it moves. On the topic of the best possible tools, a quick mention from our sponsor. And yes, this is a sponsored segment, but if you've ever wanted to take your long form videos, like a YouTube video or a podcast, and turn it into viral short form content, this segment is for you. Why? Because Clap does this automatically. By uploading a YouTube link or uploading your video, Clap then takes that, extracts the best possible content from it, adds captions, auto reframes it. Better yet, you can customize everything in the edit panel if you want to and turns your long form into short form content. What this does for me is enable me to not only post one YouTube video, but take that and post tons of shorts. But here's the perfect example from my buddy Jade from Fueled Life. He made a long form piece of YouTube content and that got him a couple thousand views. He then created shorts from it and those have been generating him hundreds of thousands of views. So if you're keen to try Clap, click the first link in this YouTube video's description and you can try it and test it for absolutely free. Better yet, if you wanna make a purchase, I've hidden a 30% coupon code somewhere in this segment. So apply that and you'll get 30% off. All right, back to the video. Remember I said not paying hundreds of dollars for pro software? Well, take a look at this one. This is pretty much like After Effects directly from CapCut. By simply selecting on your element, going to Effects and searching for Play, you'll find an effect called Play Pendulum. Let's go ahead and drag that onto our subject. You can see that if we automatically drag it onto our subject, it creates this weird box. Let me show you how to fix this. Select your element and let's create a compound clip. Now what we do is we drag Play Pendulum onto our subject. Turn Twist all the way down, turn Sharpen all the way down, and you can adjust your element's speed and strength for changing variability. Now when we click Play, you can see our subject appears to be floating in air. What's great is you can apply this to images, text, objects, and more. By changing the speed and strength of each one, you can have an effect where all of them look to be moving independently. Pro editors oftentimes use this 3D camera effect to bring dimension to their flat screen recording. Let me show you how to do it in CapCut. Selecting on your image, go to animation and combo and scroll down until you find the flip series. I personally like flip number six 
And what you'll see is it creates a cool flip effect where our video is still playing, but our image looks like it's 3D. What I'd recommend doing is zooming this in, and when we click play, you can see that our image appears to be 3D. By applying this next effect, you can turn your boring footage into a cinematic looking masterpiece. By going to effects and searching movie, you'll find a movie effect. Let's go ahead and drag that onto our timeline. What makes this even better is we can still reframe our video footage. What do I mean by that? You can see in the second shot, our subject's head is being cropped out at the top. By selecting on my video layer, I can drag down and make sure that my subject is perfectly framed. Just make sure not to extend past this white line, as you'll see that our video clip is beyond our cinematic movie bars. Remember what I said about mastering these effects? Focus on this one because nearly every single YouTuber uses it to add dynamism and a special flair to the videos. Inside of CapCut, you can do smooth zoom ins and outs. These are done by using keyframes. But wherever I want that zoom to happen, I can select on my video clip and add a scale keyframe by clicking the keyframe option. Now by toggling a couple frames ahead, I'm gonna add another keyframe and zoom in our scale to the point that I want. Let's make it 130%. But what happens when I play it is our zoom looks very artificial and amateur. This is how you're gonna fix that. Right click on your video clip, say show variable speed animation, you'll see our two keyframes. Let's click on the scale rectangle once. By clicking on that, that opens up our keyframe animator where we can now select our keyframes, make sure they turn blue and change these to auto curve. Now, instead of that straight line, our line is curved. If I play that, you can already see that it's starting to look different. But there's an extra way to customize this and make this even more professional. Selecting on my second keyframe, I can select this blue line and shift it over towards my first keyframe. Now when I play this animation, you'll see our zoom in animates fast and then slows down. This is a great way to do what so many other YouTubers do in all of their videos. You can see in our drone shot that there's barely any movement. And this is where we're gonna fake camera movements to add some extra dynamism. Just like the previous effect, we're gonna add keyframes, except this time on position. By adding a keyframe to the beginning of our clip, moving some frames ahead, and then adding another keyframe, we now have two keyframes on our timeline. What you're gonna to need to do is zoom into your clip. Now on our first keyframe, we can drag our video clip over so that the left side of our video matches where the left side of the frame is. And then if we go to our second keyframe, we can drag that all the way to the right. Effectively, what we've done is when we click play, you can see that it looks like our drone is flying over the ocean as opposed to being static. Using CapCut's online magic tools, we can select one called text to speech. On the text to speech tab, we can paste in our text and select the voice that we wanna to use to speak. Hi there. Selecting on my voice, I can click generate. And if we go ahead and play this. Match cutting text animations. Match cutting is where two objects are cut in a specific way in order to maintain visual continuity. To me, that sounds super professional and something that I could even use for my YouTube videos and play around. There's other voices like Mickey Mouse. Hi there, feel free to. There's female voices. Hi there, feel free to enter your text here. At Going back to my magic tools, there's another one that I use all the time called Image Upscaler. I'm sure we've all heard about image upscaling. The great thing about this is it's free. Let's say I had an old thumbnail that was really low res. I can go ahead and select open. You can see that this is really, really bad resolution. Let's go ahead and change this to 4K. I'm gonna select 4K and click upscale. By clicking the see original, you can see that everything is kind of blurry. And then if we swipe that, we now have a very, very sharp looking image. One of the most important parts of making a video is the thumbnail. CapCut has a free thumbnail maker. By going to cover and then new, we get a choice now to create a thumbnail directly from CapCut. What's great is you can use the elements within your video in the thumbnail. What's even cooler though, is that you get access to hundreds and hundreds of templates. Just remember when it says pro, that's for the pro version of CapCut, but everything that doesn't have pro on it is free. By simply finding a template you want to use, you can go ahead and click that and it's going to apply it to your design page. Once it's on your design page, we can change all the elements like your people, your text and your objects. Just take a look at how I replicated Iman Gadzi's thumbnail in CapCut. You can now make still images look 3D. Something that would take hours inside of After Effects takes minutes or seconds in CapCut. Select it on my image. I can go to Effects, Video Effects and Motion. Find one called 3D Zoom, and we can go ahead and click that plus icon to apply it to our image. Our background and our subject move independently, and it creates this cool documentary style 3D effect. 
Knowing how to draw your viewer's attention to one part of your screen is something pro editors do all the time and is super crucial. Let's say we wanted to highlight the text, cows lose their jobs as milk prices drop. By clicking on what I want to highlight, I'm gonna create a duplicate layer. Now on my top layer, I'm gonna to go to my adjustment tab and bring my exposure all the way down. Go back to video and select mask and let's create a rectangle mask. Now I'm gonna stretch this rectangle just to cover the text I wanna highlight like that. Once I've covered that text, let's add some feathering. Now let's select inverse. We can now see that our title is highlighted, but there's an extra thing that you can do. Drag your top layer a couple of frames along and let's go ahead and add an animation called fade in. You can see now when we play our timeline, our text is highlighted perfectly. By selecting both my layers, I'm gonna create a compound clip. I can add an animation that affects both of our clips, creating this hyper-realistic text highlighting effect. A progress bar helps viewers see when the segment you're on is gonna end. Go to your text and add a default text layer. From there, I'm gonna delete the default text and add some underscores. Now in the basic tab, I'm gonna scroll down and deselect uniform scale. And what we're gonna do is increase the height to how thick we want that to be. Once you're happy with the thickness, go ahead and scale your width so that it covers the entire screen and let's drag that to the top. I like using a red progress bar, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this red. It stands out a bit better. Let's add an animation. You wanna find one called show right. Finding show right, be sure that your duration is extended all the way to the end. And now when our timeline plays, you can see that the progress bar moves with exactly the duration of our clip. For our final hidden effect, let's create video in text. To achieve this effect, you're gonna need three elements. The first element is a plain black background. Then you're gonna need your text layer. You can change your text to whatever you want and use whatever font you want. And the third is the video that you wanna play within your text. Selected on my third layer, my video layer, I'm gonna to go to blend, toggle that down and change this to darken. And now our video is playing inside of our text. What's even cooler is you can go to your text layer and let's add an animation. By applying the concentrate animation and changing my duration, I now have something that looks really, really cool. 